Before we get started here, guys, I just want to let you know that this is an experimental build of Android for the Raspberry Pi 3. Not everything is working 100%, especially the GPU. So use this for testing purposes. It's fun to mess around with it, but this is not going to be a stable build of Android. Hey, what's going on, guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, I'm going to show you how to install Android 7.1.1 on your Raspberry Pi. We're also going to be going over installing GAP so we have access to Google Play. Before you get started, I definitely recommend go ahead and check out Geek Till It Hurts YouTube channel. He's the one who built this. This is the NuGet tablet build for the Raspberry Pi 3. It does not come pre-installed with Google Play, but we're going to do that now. As you might notice, I'm using a Linux machine. This is Ubuntu 16.04. Now the reason I'm using Linux is we have a gaps.sh that will allow us to install Google Play, or gaps, to the Raspberry Pi over network, but we need a Linux machine to do this. You can always install this image using Win32 Disk Imager on a Windows machine or Etcher on a Mac machine, but you'll need Linux to install gaps. Let's go ahead and get started here. First thing we're gonna need to do is get the image. We're gonna need the Android 7.1.1 image. Links are in the description for everything I'm going to show you today. Go ahead and download that. I've placed mine on my desktop. Next thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and download Etcher. Now there are several ways to install an image to an SD card using a Linux machine, but we're going super easy today, guys. Etcher is available for Linux, Windows, and Mac. Very easy application to use. Download your variant. I'm on Linux, so I'll download the Linux version. I'm going to save it to my downloads folder. So now that we have that all downloaded, there's one last thing we need, and the link is down below. This is the gaps.sh, and we're going to use this at the end. I'll show you how to do it. But for now, let's extract the Android image. Double click, and I'm just going to extract mine right to the desktop. All right, so the extraction was complete. Let's just click close and we're gonna close this down. Now inside of this folder, we will have the and seven underscore one tablet. This is the image we're gonna use. I'm just gonna drag it to my desktop for easy access. Let's go to our downloads folder and run Etcher. So you're gonna download Etcher, it's gonna look like this. Double click, extract. Now I've already done this, but I'll do it again. I'm going to have to replace all, close, quit. Now we're going to run Etcher. So from here, this is very simple to do. Select image. Now that's going to be our image we extracted to our desktop. So I'm going to go to my desktop right here, 7.9 gigabytes. We have the image loaded up. Now we need to select our SD card. As you can see, I'm using a 32 gigabyte SD card. You can click change down here, but make sure you are selecting your SD card and not a USB drive or an internal hard drive. Etcher is pretty smart and it should recognize an SD card. Continue, flash. You may need to enter your password, whatever you created when you installed Ubuntu. So what it's gonna do now is flash the image to the SD card and then verify the file system. So give it a little bit of time. As you can see, our ETA is 20 minutes. Sit back and relax, go get a cup of coffee. All right guys, so the flash is complete. We're now going to take the SD card out of our Linux machine, place it in our Raspberry Pi 3 and boot it up. We need to connect our Raspberry Pi 3 to the same network as our Linux machine and grab our IP address. Let's move over there now. Okay, so when you boot up your Raspberry Pi 3, you'll see the Android logo here. Just let it sit for a little while. This really depends on the speed of your SD card and things like that. The first boot on any Android system after you flash a custom ROM takes a long time, so just sit back and relax. Android is booted up. Let's go ahead and connect to the same network that our Linux machine is going to be connected to. I'm using a mouse and a keyboard here. Just go to settings, Wi-Fi. You could use Ethernet if you'd like to. I'm just going to connect it to the same network. You have to put in your password, obviously. We're now connected online. Let's go back. 
We're going to find our IP address, and we can do that very easily by going to About Tablet, Status, and here's your IP address, 192-168-10-173. Yours may be different from this, so take a picture of it, write it down, remember it, we're going to need it. You can totally use Android like it is, but I would love to have Google Play installed. So let's move back over to the Linux machine. The Raspberry Pi is going to stay running, still connected online, and I'll show you how to install Google Play. Let's close everything down. Now you're going to need the gaps.sh. Let's go ahead and open this up. You can double click. It will open it up with gedit. If we read through here, there's the ADB address, and right here we need to put our IP address in. So I'm going to put the IP address of my Raspberry Pi. So for architecture, we're going to put ARM. And package name, we're going to go with a Pico package, which is a very small package. Go up to the top, File, Save. So after we've modified our gaps.sh, let's go ahead and open up a terminal. Control, Alt, T will open a terminal for us, or you can always go up here and search terminal. Now we need to install Android Tools and LZIP. Down in the description, there's a text file for you. We're going to make this easy. To install Android Tools, go ahead and copy, and just paste this in there. Make sure you get that sudo. Press Enter. Enter your password. Mine's already installed. You may have to hit Y to install it. Next, we need to install LZIP. sudo apt git install LZIP. You can just copy and paste this. We now have Android Tools and LZIP installed. Let's close this terminal down. We're going to open up another terminal. This is just going to make it easier for you guys. From here, we need to type in ADB connect and the IP address of a Raspberry Pi. I'm going to press enter. Already connected to 192-168-10-173. So I am connected. My gaps.sh is on my desktop. So we need to CD into that directory. CD desktop. Now this is all case sensitive. We are now in the desktop directory. Now I'm going to run the gaps.sh. And that's right here for you. Press enter. It's going to check for the available device. As long as we modified this gaps.sh file to match our IP address, everything should go fine. We're remounting the system partition. It's going to download gaps for us. It's going to install it. Let it sit. When this is done, it will tell us it is done, and we'll have Google Play installed on a Raspberry Pi 3. So your Pi is going to automatically reboot. Please be patient and give it time to initialize the installed packages. It can take up to 10 minutes for the system to get responsive after boot. We're now done with the Linux machine. We're going to move over to the Raspberry Pi. If we did everything correctly, we should have Google Play installed. All right, so I'm back at the Pi here. Uh, make sure you're reconnected to your Wi-Fi. Sometimes it just doesn't reconnect. It'll save your password, but you'll just need to click on it. Let's go into our apps drawer, and we have Google Play. Open it up. We'll need to sign in just like we do with any Google Play account. We'll be able to access all the games and apps. Now, if you watched my previous video, you'll know that a lot of stuff's not working right now. This is a very experimental build, but a lot of you have asked me to show you guys how to install Google Play on this build, so that's what I did. You might get Google Play is not responding a couple times. Just click OK. You could go ahead and give it a reboot if you'd like to. So you'll enter your email or however you sign into your Google account. And there you have it. You have Google Play installed. We still need to do one thing. Let's go ahead and close it. We're going to open up our settings. And we're going to allow permissions for Google Play. Sometimes you may get an error. Um, Google Play is not responding or something. Go to your apps. We're actually going to modify Google Play Services and Google Play Store. So go to services first. Permissions. Make sure everything's checked. 
There's a possibility it won't be checked for you, so go ahead and turn everything on. We're gonna do the same thing for Google Play. Go back, Google Play Store, Permissions, and make sure all of these are checked on. Open up Google Play and find something to download. As long as you've signed in correctly, you should be able to access any of these apps. Now, a lot of them aren't gonna work. Some of them are gonna work great. You just need to experiment. The biggest problem with this build is the GPU. If you watch my last video, you will know that. So that's pretty much it, guys. Everything's here. I'll just download Hill Climb Racing real quick. Hill Climb Racing 2, install. Now I'm not even sure if this game's gonna work, but we're gonna try it out right now. This whole build here is really just for you guys to experiment with. Geek Till It Hurts built this, and it's pretty awesome. It's one of the best builds so far, in my opinion, and I've tried a ton of them. I have not tried all of them, but I've tried a lot. Wait for this to install. Now that it's installed, let's see if it'll launch. Looks like we might have some luck with this game. And sound works, if you can hear it. I'm going to turn this down. So having controller based games is going to be your best bet with something like this. Most of these games are made for touch, obviously for Android phones and tablets, but there's a lot of stuff you can use controllers with or keyboards. So that's it for now, guys. I really appreciate you watching. If you could, hit that like button and subscribe. And definitely go ahead and check out Geek Till It Hurts YouTube page. Links in the description and on screen now. Like always, thanks for watching.